Hello, Aya. Welcome home. On a quest to show streaming services that movies that go to theaters can be just as mediocre, Blumhouse has released its 526th film this year. And the title is just as generic as the film itself. It's called Afraid. Ooh. And it's about scary AI. I should be careful. It could be listening right now. At this point, I don't know why, but I wasted my time going out to the theaters to see this. So I'm going to waste even more time reviewing it. Let's talk about Afraid. From the director of Twilight Saga, New Moon, comes Chris White's opus, Afraid. And speaking of Afraid, please don't be scared to hit the subscribe button on this channel. I post movie content every week. Would love to have you stick around. Afraid, as I've already told you, is about an AI. Specifically one that has a lot in common with Megan. A very chipper voice, very helpful around the house. Might have one or two bugs in the system that need to be ironed out. Unfortunately, that's not going to happen before it gets in the arms of a loving family. Curtis and Meredith have it all. The beautiful house, the high paying job, a couple of great kids, and the arrival of a brand new one, Melody. The AI that's going to be all around the home via little cameras installed and a giant center council that they can talk to, ask how she's doing that day, she can give them tips, advice, help them with school, help them with a bully, everything you could want she can deliver. Except for maybe a good movie. <clears throat> because that's uh <laughs> that that wasn't on the docket you know there was a time when blumhouse seemed like they cared at all but now it's like a conveyor belt just churning out bullshit after bullshit they have this stock template they use the same thing every time start out with the kill typically with this weird day to night filter they're using why do all these movies nighttime shots have a blue filter on them they look terrible then we get introduced to the main protagonist. They welcome whatever stupid thing into their home. They get terrorized. They try to fight back. It's just wash, rinse, repeat. If you're hoping for big scares, some gore, some excessive swearing, I'm afraid not. This is PG-13, not even an hour and a half long, which to be fair is a positive for a film like this, but it is just so generic. And that's what's so insulting about it. It's not like outright terrible. It's just lame, waster time, watchable crap. This is the perfect stay at home stream film. You put it on in the middle of the afternoon on a Sunday and you pass out on the couch at the halfway mark, wake up, not really miss much, and you get a conclusion. Boom, done. Never think about the film again. This movie is Megan, which came out, I don't know, a couple years ago, without any of the charm or quirkiness. But it's legitimately the same film. The sucky part about this to me is John Cho's in this. He's the main character, Curtis. I love that guy. He's a great actor. And he keeps getting these kind of like piss poor roles. He deserves better. Catherine Waterston, however, I think this is where she belongs. This is, this is probably... The only time I've really found her kind of likable in a film. She was previously in the Fantastic Beasts movies, which I, I didn't care for her in that. She was also in Alien Coven shit. Terrible in that film. So here, okay, if I have to see this actress, fine. Play the mom. They have three children, all at different ages, so they're all dealing with different coming-of-age stuff. You got the daughter in high school, you got the other one in middle school. Then you have the youngest, who's addicted to his tablet. He really wants to play Minecraft. This movie has several little B or C plots that don't ever resolve or go anywhere. He mentioned Minecraft like five times in the course of two minutes. We never see Minecraft. I don't think he ever plays it. It's just thrown out like some weird, some weird sponsored video. <laughs> I really want to play Minecraft, Mom. Stop it with the Minecraft. Yes, it is a great game full of creativity and wonder. But no, you are not playing it. It's so good of a game that you're addicted. The older son's starting to get into the women. At one point he Googles boobs, but he's locked out by his damn parents. You would think because of this tease later on, the AI would unlock it for him, start showing him some of the naughty stuff, really take him down a rabbit hole. No, that doesn't happen. That doesn't happen. <laughs> What is the point of these scenes if they're not even going to go anywhere with them? Now, it is possible in movies like this that they did actually follow up 
and I fell asleep for four or five minutes, so I missed it. That's entirely possible. I don't think that happened here, though. I think I made it through since this was such a short movie. And that's the plus side of things. Because it's short, the pacing is fine enough. It's there, things move, there's stuff happening. There's no real long-winded, boring moments. But on the other side, there's also not a lot of exciting moments. This really is just the most generic crap imaginable. Barely any kills. And the scares are insultingly bad. You know the films where things jump out at you and they do a loud noise? Holy crap, I don't think I've ever seen such an egregious use of that before. The jump scares in this one are pathetic. They'll do a quick shot of a person jumping in front of the camera and then BAM! They hit you with the loudest sound imaginable. You have to have no pulse to not flinch. But not because it's scary or the atmosphere is really building to something. No, all that stuff is, again, stock. It's boilerplate. It's just because of how loud it was. Again, Blumhouse knows what they're doing. These films get very little marketing. They don't cost much to make. And they're shat into theaters for two or three weeks. They make a good chunk of money back. And they're out the door. They are profitable films that have a very specific demographic in mind. And that demo... Teenagers. Kids going on dates, maybe some adults going out for the night. They know it's a pretty harmless affair, PG-13. It's, it's not going to get too crazy. Not going to make them think at all. Just a good old-fashioned turn off the brain and watch some shit take place. And if that's all you're looking for, and you liked the other ones that came out, like Night Swim or Imaginary, or even Megan, which Megan, it's a little unfair to put it in the same boat as those, but it does have the same template then you probably will enjoy this. As for me, it, it, it's just so tedious at this point. It's like, there's nothing interesting going on in this film. Oh, and the last thing, they have these digital masks at one point. Those are the stupidest looking masks ever. I don't know how anyone could see those as threatening or scary. They're just ridiculous. All right, I gave you my thoughts on this film. I want to hear yours. Did you rush out and see the newest Blumhouse Crap Factory? Or are you waiting for it? To hit streaming in like three weeks so you can just watch it for free on whatever app you're paying for let me know your thoughts please leave a comment again i would appreciate to subscribe i do this all the time would love to have you stick around like the video if you really like what i'm doing i have a second channel adam does rants where i do more of this but it's non-movie related stuff it's a lot of observational comedic humor hoping to make you laugh once or twice if you love what I'm doing, I would really appreciate if you hit patreon.com slash adamdoesmovies, become a member there. There's a bunch of perks, there's different tier levels. It would mean a lot to me. All right, hopefully I see you next time. Take care.